Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Hai Win Ho Horde. In 2015, while excavating a cemetery in Jiangxi Province in China, archaeologists unearthed an incredible discovery. They found 187 large gold coins from an aristocrat's tomb inside two boxes belonging to the grave of Hai Win Ho, or the Marquis of Hai Win. The coins went far beyond the team's expectations. They also found 25 hoof-shaped gold ingots. The grave also contained several jade artifacts, including a pendant decorated with dragon and phoenix patterns, as well as bronze objects. Archaeologists were fascinated by the jade items, which they said represent the Han Dynasty's highest quality craftsmanship. These were just some of the 10,000 artifacts that were eventually found within the tomb. The treasures make up the largest and best preserved collection of gold items ever found in a Han Dynasty burial. One coin weighed in at 250 grams, putting its estimated value at $8,611 based on market prices at the time of the discovery. The Marquis of Hai Win's tomb dates back to sometime between 206 BC and 24 AD during the Western Han Dynasty, and it's the best preserved burial from the era ever found. Number 9. Black Swan Project In 2007, a company called Odyssey Marine Exploration flew $500 million worth of treasure from Gibraltar to its headquarters in Florida. It refused to reveal the origins of the cryptic hoard, which included 17 tons of mostly silver coins. The company did admit that the coins were mostly from one particular shipwreck, but that there were coins from other wrecks thrown into the mix. Most of the currency is likely uncirculated, according to rare coin expert Nick Bruyer, who examined several thousand of the coins. It was later revealed that Odyssey filed court paperwork for rights to salvage the wreck of the Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes, a Spanish warship that sank off the Portuguese coast in 1804. Naturally, the Spanish government fought the case and claimed ownership. Because some of the coins were minted in Lima, the Peruvian government also claimed dibs on the treasure. The court ultimately ruled that the hoard rightfully belongs to Spain, and Odyssey was ordered to turn over the treasure and to pay over $1 million to the Spanish government for bad faith and abusive litigation. Number 8. Treasure in Bulgaria Back in 1949, three brothers named Pavel, Petko, and Mikhail Dekov were working together at a tile factory in Bulgaria when they unearthed what they mistakenly thought were some brass instruments from the Roman gypsy culture. They were digging clay when they stumbled upon the collection of nine objects, with no awareness that they had just found actual treasure. An expert reported to the scene and identified, much to the brothers' surprise, that they had uncovered 24 karat gold Thracian artifacts dating back to the 4th or 3rd century BC. Scholars believe that the items are a ceremonial set belonging to King Sufis III. The vessels are decorated with scenes from Thracian myths and culture. Four of the pieces are rhytons, or ceremonial cups, shaped like the heads of animals and women. Two resemble deer, and one takes the form of a ram's head. They represent some of the best-preserved Thracian artifacts ever discovered, as well as some of the most valuable, with a combined weight of 13.4 pounds of gold. This collection is one of the best surviving artifacts of Thracian culture. Number 7. San Jose Shipwreck The Spanish galleon, the San Jose, was laden with gold, silver, and emeralds when it sunk off the coast of Cartagena, Colombia in 1708. It was sailing as part of the Spanish treasure fleet when the ships crossed paths with a British squadron. The encounter erupted into what became known as Wager's Action. San Jose's powder magazines exploded during the skirmish, causing the galleon to sink with most of its crew and all of its treasures still on board. Only 11 people survived the harrowing ordeal. Nobody knows what exactly caused the explosion, but some experts speculate that the ship's captain shot them because having the treasure plunge to the sea floor was better than letting it fall into British hands. The wreck remained missing for centuries as treasure hunters scrambled to locate it in hopes of cashing in on a huge fortune. Based on the cargo that reportedly went down with the San Jose, the goods are estimated to be worth upwards of a whopping $14 billion in modern currency. When the Sea Search Armada, or the SSA expedition funded by U.S. investors, claimed to have found the wreck in 1981, the Colombian government was quick to establish a new law giving itself rights to the treasure. Authorities refused to let the discoverers excavate the site, and they retaliated by suing. Long story short, 
the wreck was declared property of the Colombian state. The country's navy rediscovered the submerged ship in 2015, and the custody battle ensued, this time with Spain trying to lay claim to some of the goods. The indigenous Cara Cara people of modern-day Bolivia, whose land the treasures were extracted from, have also expressed an interest in collecting in on the fortune. Sea Search Armada is also still fighting for its piece of the pie, and the case currently lies in the hands of the Colombian Supreme Court. Number 6. The Sroda Treasure While demolishing a building back in 1985, workers in Sroda Slaska, Poland found a vase filled with 3,000 14th century silver coins. They unearthed even more coins in the building next door, along with gold Florentine coins called Florin. Locals flocked to the landfill containing the building debris and discovered more treasures, including a gold crown that likely belonged to Emperor Charles IV's wife, Blanche of Alloy. They also found 12th and 13th century gold pendants, a sapphire ring, and a gold clasp containing precious stones. The items are worth an estimated $120 million. Scholars believe that Emperor Charles IV pawned the items to raise money to back his claim that he was the true King of the Romans. Soon after that, the plague struck Poland, and the banker in possession of the hoard either fled, got sick and died, or was persecuted for his religion, as Jews were commonly and wrongfully blamed for the disease. Poland's National Museum owns most of the treasures now, but it's possible that there are some stray items that remain undiscovered or in unidentified hands. Have you ever found any treasure by accident? Let me know in the comments below! Number 5. Christ Mocked An extremely rare and valuable painting by the 13th century artist Cimabue hung inconspicuously on the wall of an elderly woman's home in France for years before it was discovered. It wasn't until the house was being cleared out for auction in 2019 that an auctioneer named Philomene Wolf noticed the valuable Renaissance work. Known as Christ Mocked, the painting depicts the mocking that Jesus Christ endured in the hours leading up to his crucifixion. And thankfully, it was found in excellent condition, despite being hung above a hot plate in the kitchen of the home. At first glance, the artwork is nothing special. Measuring just 7.9 by 9.4 inches, it's rather small. But thanks to Wolf's keen eye for masterpieces, it was just narrowly spared from going to the dump. She estimated the painting's value at somewhere between $360,000 and $480,000, but recommended consulting a specialist. And as it turned out, Wolf's estimate was quite low. The piece sold at auction for an astounding $26.6 million to a group of US-based Chilean collectors who specialize in Italian masterpieces. But the French government was eager to get its hands on the painting and blocked it from being exported under the condition that the country has 30 months to raise enough money to buy it. Whether this will happen remains to be seen. Number 4. Stolen Viking Treasure In 2015, metal detectorists George Powell and Leighton Davies discovered a large Viking treasure hoard on privately owned land in Leominster, England. The trove consisted of 300 Anglo-Saxon coins and jewelry dating back between the 5th and 9th centuries. Its value is estimated at up to $16,230,000. Because they didn't actually have permission from the landowner to search the property, the duo kept quiet about their discovery. They also wanted to cash in on the goods, which would have automatically become property of the Crown under the Treasure Act if the pair had reported the stash. While finders often receive a reward for turning over artifacts, the payout is nowhere near the actual value of the items. But violating the Treasure Act comes with heavy penalties, and Powell and Davies' greed eventually caught up with them. They tried to covertly sell some of the coins to private dealers, who reported the pair to the authorities. Both men received prison sentences of 8 to 10 years. Not worth it if you ask me. Sadly, while all the jewelry and a gold ingot were recovered, only 30 of the coins were ever found. The judge condemned them at their sentencing for robbing society of the opportunity to enjoy and admire the artifacts and of cheating the landowner out of his deserved reward. Number 3. SS Central America Hoard Nicknamed the Ship of Gold, the SS Central America steamer sank off the South Carolina coast during a hurricane in 1857. It was en route from Panama to New York City when it went down, taking thousands of pounds of gold and 425 people with it to the bottom of the ocean. 
Eager to find the wreck, treasure hunter Tommy Thompson convinced 161 investors to fund an expedition during the 1980s. They ponied up $12.7 million for the project. In 1988, Thompson and his crew discovered the wreck 8,000 feet below the water surface. The following year, they recovered around three tons of gold coins valued at over $50 million. A slew of lawsuits ensued until finally, a decade later, the team was awarded a 92% share of the wreck. But the lawsuits continued as numerous investors and companies claimed that Thompson and his crew cheated them out of millions of dollars. In 2012, Thompson failed to appear in court and went into hiding with his girlfriend. They lived in a hotel for the next three years, keeping a low profile while paying all their expenses in cash to avoid being traceable. The authorities eventually caught up with the couple and put Thompson in federal prison while the case gets sorted out. He claims that he doesn't know where the treasure is and has stubbornly stuck to this story while languishing behind bars for the past six years. Although Thompson has some supporters, the judge refuses to buy his story and has continuously demanded answers. Whether or not the disgraced explorer will eventually crack remains to be seen. Number 2 uncirculated Great Depression coins. In 2003, a 75-year-old woman named Joan Langbord found 10 coins inside a safety deposit box belonging to her family. Because she had worked at her late father's jewelry store in Philadelphia nearly all her life, she had enough knowledge of coins to suspect that they were 1933 double eagles. The double eagle is famous for being one of the rarest and most beautiful American coins. Designed by sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens, the coin features Lady Liberty on one side and a bald eagle on the other. Each of the 445,500 double eagles that were minted in 1933 were valued at $20. But they were never circulated, which made them even more valuable over time. During the Great Depression, the U.S. was plagued by poverty, unemployment, homelessness, and a deep distrust for banks. As a result, people began to hoard gold. This prompted then-President Franklin D. Roosevelt to pull all gold coins from circulation, and the double eagle was consequently never released into public hands. Most of the coins were sealed away in the basement of the U.S. Mint. The agency held onto 500 of them, while two of the coins were sent to the Smithsonian. The rest were supposed to be melted down into gold bars. But a cashier smuggled an unknown amount of the coins out of the mint's possession and into the hands of private collectors. A Secret Service investigation had actually traced 10 of the double eagles to Joan Langbord's father, Israel Scott, but they failed to retrieve the coins at the time. Langbord assumed that her father legally owned the currency and took it to the mint for authentication. She hoped to sell the coins, which were worth a whopping $40 million. To her surprise, however, the mint deemed the double eagles to be stolen government property and confiscated them from Langbord. Langbord sued the Mint, the Treasury, and various federal officials in 2006. She claimed that there was a narrow window of time during which her father could have purchased the coins legally. Unfortunately, the verdict ruled against her, and the coins remained in the government's possession. Number 1. The Hoxney Hoard Eric Laws was searching his property in Suffolk, England for a lost hammer back in 1992 when he discovered the largest ever cache of Roman treasure ever found in Britain. Known as the Hoxney Hoard, it contained at least 60 pounds of silver and gold objects, which archaeologists removed from the site by the shovelful. The artifacts include over 15,000 Roman coins, 200 gold items, and dozens of silver spoons. Laws and the landowner received generous seven-figure payouts for the find, which helped experts glean insight into Britain's turbulent separation from the Roman Empire around 410 AD. British Roman subjects had lost the empire's protection during the late 4th century, sparking a period of mass hoarding among citizens in an effort to protect their valuables from enemy raids. Researchers originally assumed that the Hoxney Hoard had been buried around that time, but they found out that the coins continued to circulate for decades after the empire fell. Nearly all the coins are clipped by up to a third, with the trimmings likely used to make imitation coins. According to archaeologist Peter Guest, this suggests that the Roman emperor was no longer supplying Britain with currency. Archaeologist Catherine Johns speculated that the family who owned the Hoxney Hoard attached sentimental value to its items and even used them before carefully burying them, 
indicating that the items were not hidden under duress like they would be during a time of turmoil. Regardless of when the Huxney hoard was buried, which remains disputed to this day, experts agree on one thing. It's one of the most valuable Roman era treasure collections ever found in Britain. Thanks for watching! Which of these archaeological discoveries was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!